His donation reads, I wanted to say thank you to all the runners and staff involved for this awesome event. I put all this towards saving the animals. If people want to see them dead, they better have to pay for it. Glad to see this task segment live. Greetings from Germany. Also, I have an anonymous $100 donation that says, well, Ah, Taskbot, preparing us for that dismal future when even speedrunners are replaced by machines. Have my donation go to using the Wondershot on Lavos. We have a $50 donation from Vash that says, Go, Taskbot, go! Show us how to really break games. We have a $50 donation from Avatag, who says, I've been watching the SGDQ slash AGDQ for a few years now, and I am never ceased to be amazed by the runners and the generosity from the community. Keep up the great work, runners and donors. Oh, also save the animals. Cohen God says, donated $50 and says, I promised my boss I'd donate since I was so distracted this week. His daughter's first birthday was last week, so this money goes to save the animals since she adores them so much. Good luck to all the runners. Just as a quick reminder, if you donate during this task bot block, if you donate a minimum of $15, you'll be entered to win the Wizard of Oz pinball translate. Captain Barricade donated $50 and says simply, Taskbot, best bot. We have a $75 donation from Ply Scepter who says, Everyone is doing such a great job. Keep it up and save the animals. Let's hit a million. Vosslayer donated $50 with the comment that reads, Just love all the epic donation. Keep up the good work. All the epic gaming, I should say. We have a $50 donation from Style for Alley that says, I, for one, welcome our Taskbot overlords. Thanks to all involved for a fantastic SGDQ. It's the Taskmaster's choice for where this donation goes. Thank you. 
Kristen S. donated $50 and says, Watched for quite a few years but never got around to donating. About time to do it now. Save the animals. For a quick update on how that bid war is going. Currently, Save the Animals is winning with $92,295. And Kill the Animals is lagging just a little bit over $3,000 behind at $89,196. Super Metroid is coming up after Link to the Past and Super Mario 64, so you do have quite a bit of time to get your donations in for that. Looks like our Taskbot guys are ready to go, so I'm going to pass it back over to them. Uh, so, we're going to get started on Sonic Advance, so I'm going to start a bot here. Alright, that's running now. Okay, um. so, we do have a bit of a surprise. I mentioned when we submitted everything that we wouldn't be doing any console verification. I might have been incorrect about that. Um, okay. So, this is an actual GameCube with a Game Boy Player in it. And uh, right now, it's going through and nuking all the data uh, using a script. Uh, this is running through a Raspberry Pi running Linux. And uh, it's connected to a board that I'll let Indrift explain. Indrift is here to my right. And I just need to get the timing correct on this to start both at the same time. It has to wait for a few seconds on the uh, start screen to uh, manipulate the RNG properly. Um, this actually required quite a bit of time, about three days to figure out. Um, the, the way the RNG in this game is seeded, uh, at the first time the RNG is seeded, it uh, uses the number of frames it's been since the game started, so I actually needed to restart the game at some point to get it working. Now, you might notice that there are two versions of the same exact movie on. There's a reason for that. Um, he goes so fast, the game can't keep up. The in-game camera lags behind almost all the time. So we're running a cam hack encode, so you can actually see the craziness going on. The reason he's going so fast is because of something that's been dubbed the Ultra Spin Dash, where you basically spin dash 11 times in a row, and the game just can't keep up, to the point where you can often glitch through walls and uh, just go really, really fast. Here you can see he's already to the first boss. You might also notice that events on the game don't trigger until the camera actually catches up. So you might see the camera with Sonic just waiting there for the goalpost, for the camera to catch up and so on. Oh, by the way, this is Kirby Master. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the cam hack encode was done with an upscaler, so it looks a little bit different, but uh, they're, they're both exactly the same, uh, same graphics. There's no, uh, there's no funky filters put on or any kind of other adaptation. It's just upscaled. See, this is a good level for showing how different the camera can be between the exact same run. Do you want to talk about what we had to go through to get this console verified? Yeah, so the, uh, the actual device this is running on right now is not, it's not an independent Game Boy Advance. It is a Game Boy Player, which actually, as it turns out, contains the exact same CPU as the original Game Boy Advance, down to the pinout and everything. As it turns out, also, there is a pin for every single button exposed by that CPU. So I just soldered to the board so I could control each pin individually. I also listened to the V-Sync signal because the uh, LCD pinouts are still there, so I can tell exactly when a frame triggers. And combined, 
combining those, I could get frame accurate input coming from wherever and playing it back on the Game Boy Advance CPU in the Game Boy Player. There's a little microcontroller inside the Game Boy Player itself that is uh, reading the data over USB, which is coming from Taskbot. I like to call this modification of the Game Boy Player the Game Boy Player Player. <laughs> yeah. Endrift was telling me earlier that we couldn't uh, hook up Taskbot to a GameCube controller board because the GameCube and the Game Boy Player run at slightly different frame rates. So trying to use a game, like any sort of GameCube controller to control this task just wouldn't work because it would desync right away. Yeah, I tried it with various different offsets at first, and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't, and it was just a complete mess. Uh, the, the difference between timing means that the actual GameCube itself, when it gets the video data from the Game Boy Player, can sometimes just randomly drop or gain frames. This can be seen in some recordings where sometimes the shield will blink perfectly and sometimes it just doesn't. So obviously, uh, anytime you're wanting to work with a handheld console, like we did with the, uh, the Pokemon Red run at AGDQ, it, it, it's difficult. It's really hard to get wires into a handheld device. So for AGDQ, we did um, we did it through the game, uh, the, the Super Game Boy. This time we're doing it through the Game Boy Player. Neither one was particularly easy to work with. So that boss that just was defeated was the right at the beginning of this boss fight. The RNG is reseeded. So when I first ran through this, the boss had absolutely the wrong pattern. It took me three days of restarting the Game Boy Player player, recording for five minutes, checking the video output, and completing the whole cycle over again. And uh, eventually I found out that I needed to wait about 720 frames at the beginning of the game to get the right frame count. But it's the exact right seed, so now everything else that uses the RNG, since it was only reseeded once, will work fine. That's one of the reasons that we had to uh, carefully line up the playback of the cam hack encode and the actual console verification movie because they turned out not to be completely identical. Th th obviously, we worked very hard to try to get the, uh, the emulators to be 100% accurate to the real hardware, but sometimes that's more challenging than it, than it first seems. Yeah. Uh, when I was making this, I also discovered that I had to add three blank frames at the beginning of every level because the console takes slightly longer to load the levels than the emulator did. This means that by the end of the uh, run, it's about two seconds longer than it is an emulator. Abusing his buddy tails to kill the boss here. Meanwhile, Sonic is down there drowning. And we'll just hold his head underwater. <laughs> Uh, concerning that three-frame delay at the start of a level, uh, as you can see, Tassers care quite a bit about emulation accuracy, uh, because if your emulator is not accurate, then we can't console verify it like this. Something A three-frame delay is completely unnoticeable by pretty much everyone. Um, maybe, maybe not to Mewtwo King, as everyone likes to joke. Shout out to if you're watching. <laughs> Yeah, one frame difference, as you saw earlier, has a substantial impact on what the next random generation of anything will be in the game. Uh, it, it completely alters the type of, of weapon drops you might get in certain games. It alters everything. So even one frame difference will cause the entire run to desync. Yeah, when I started the level one frame too early in some places, it would still get most of the way through the level, but it would miss a platform or just one tiny little thing would throw the level off entirely. Yeah, even bumping into a wall will just mean that your character might, like the replay it just might have your character bumping into walls or just running the wrong way or jumping in the wrong places. Uh, I'm trying to remember, uh, I, was, I was trying to get a, a TAS replay file to sync in an emulator I had, but I had the wrong version and I think it was Insult2 who fixed it for me, so shout outs to him. It was, yeah. The first time I got this game, or well, actually, slightly after the first time I got this game syncing, I tried to make sure it would still sync, and that level right there just randomly broke, and it repeatedly broke in exactly the same place. 
I swapped out the cartridge for a friend's one, and that one worked fine. So I, I don't know what I did to that cartridge, but even erasing the save data didn't fix it. Huh. So if you remember from the Sonic Advance race, this level has four sections to it, and there's a cutscene between each section where the rocket continuously falls apart. After this one, he's pretty much going to skip every single cutscene here. You'll notice, right the, the, you'll notice the counter is now timing down. Uh, timer is now counting down due to the fact that the second stage is now, you know, everything's blowing up. And he just kind of skipped a cutscene right there. And now he's in the second major part of the rocket. It had been so long since I actually played this game that I kind of forgot that this level just kind of blows up partway through because, as you can see, it looks like you're just bypassing most of it the whole time. And that's, he just skipped another cutscene there. Looks like he prefers to avoid most of the elements of the game. <laughs> Boing. Boing. And bringing up the rear guard. Hey, Tails. Bye, Tails. Bye, Tails. Hey, Tails. Bye, Tails. <laughs> Rejected. <laughs> uh, I want to come to Sonic. No. <laughs> that time bonus takes forever. Yeah, so the task optimizes for in-game time, just like the real, just like the console runs we do. I was wondering bonus. about that. I mean, yeah. the section we just saw, like you're flying through walls, you're, and it, it's impossible to do that as a human. And that's one of the reasons that we don't ever compare human runs, real-time runs, to tool-assisted speed runs, and the tool-assisted speed community goes out of their way to note any file that was made with tools. Almost everything you see here is physically impossible by a human, so. Unless you can do 22 frame accurate inputs in a row. <laughs> yep. Very early on in the uh, RTA and test relationship, there was some animosity because one very, very famous video of Super Mario Bros. 3 was released that did not include proper annotation that it was created with an emulator with tool assisted uh, with frame advance or slow motion and as a result there was kind of a little bit of animosity early on um, nowadays there's there's a very very close collusion between real-time runners providing routes tasks tasters of games providing strategy and uh, it, it's, it's great to have both communities uh, cooperating so well I love this part <laughs> just, it's just, just run around Blew up off screen, you know, who cares? <laughs> yeah, I can very much confirm what Duango is saying. Uh, Tassers and real time speedrunners are very much collaborators now. We're, you know, we're playing for the same team. I, I'm one of many runners who are inspired by the task for our game to try to come as close as we time. can to imitating it. Oh, I was a little late on the button, sorry. Close enough. Yeah, close enough. Hey, Tails. So, Tails is getting a bit impatient. Yeah, he's, he's just sitting there he, he doesn't want to be left alone. Look at that. So he's standing on a stage and... Wait for it. <laughs> Sonic continues to go fast, even when straight down. I'm not sure how Tails got to his plane first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering about that. Like, how did he get there? Anyway. And that's that run. Oh, we still have game audio from the uh, GameCube. All right, let's kill that, and we're going to move on to the next uh, run. That was Sonic Advance. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to Ikaruga.